to the same room. Hey roommates, today on The Same Room, we're going to be talking about God's purpose for you. Purpose is a topic that is very popular, yet it holds a lot of ambiguity. Joining me on this conversation is Charlemagne the God. He is best known as a host on The Breakfast Club and a New York Times bestselling author. And Harmony Samuels, he is the record producer and songwriter behind a lot of artists that we know and love, such as Jana Jackson, Chris Brown, Brandy, to name a few. This conversation is going to help you navigate God's purpose for your life. You don't want to miss it. Stay tuned. How are you doing today? I'm blessed, black, and highly favored. How are you? That's like the um, <laughs> that's like the fancy version of the bishops. <laughs> yeah, bishops always say they're blessed and highly favored. I just like to throw the the, the black in there too, because that gives me you know, that makes me feel like that makes me feel empowered as well. That's you know, when beautiful. you say you're blessed, you feel empowered. When you say you're highly favored, you say you're empowered. You feel empowered, but when you say you're black, yeah. you feel empowered. That's too. that so, black you know, privilege, right there. There you go. There you go. <laughs> right I there. love that. So this conversation, we're going to be talking about discovering God's purpose for you. Mm. And before we get into the core of that, I would like to ask you both: Did you always know that you would be where you are in the industry right now? I'll let you do the work. Yes, uh, a million percent. Um, because I remember, you know, being an intern at Z93 Jams in Charleston, South Carolina in, in 1998. And then when I started off as a part-time radio personality, I remember doing overnights. You know, the overnight mm -hmm. shift is like midnight to five in the morning. And I remember just going down these rabbit holes of radio personality. So this was like 99. So I was listening to like, you know, Angie Martinez and Wendy Williams and, you know, uh, you know, Star and Buck and... You know, I, I, this, uh, Tom Joyner was syndicated in our market and Doug Banks was syndicated in our market. And I remember just saying to myself, if I'm going to do radio, I want to do it on that level. You know, I don't want to be just a, uh, another, I mean, I don't want to say just another, but I just, I just don't, I didn't want to be just in one market, you know, doing time and temperature and introducing the next song. Like, I didn't want to just be yeah. an announcer. I wanted to be but what if, I call a super job. If you rewind, if you go beyond that point where the time where you wanted to be a rapper, mm -hmm. during those moments of your life, did you think that this is where you end up? Well, no, but I mean, that's why I believe in divine misdirection. Because, yeah. you know, I got this, I got a tattoo of Wolverine from the X-Men on my arm holding a microphone. So in my mind, I knew that a microphone would change my life. Just at that point, I thought it would be rap. Hmm. But eventually a microphone did changed my life. It just yeah. happened to be radio. And me pursuing that rap career is what ultimately got me in the lane of radio because I was in the, a studio one day, uh, Never So Deep Records. Uh, I think it was Never So Deep. It was Never So Deep RTNT. I'm pretty sure it was Never So Deep. And I met my man, Willie Will. And Willie Will was a radio personality in Charleston at the time. Wow. So I just asked him, how did he get in the radio? And he's the one who planted that seed in my head and told me, like, yo, I just went down there and got an internship. And I was like, I don't have to be in college. And he was like, nah. And mind you, this is 1998 in Charleston, South Carolina. So <laughs> totally different ball game as far as getting in the radio. Yeah. But, I mean, if it wasn't for me having that initial dream of rap, rap then I would have never gotten to that, that lane of radio. But that's why I do believe in divine misdirection. Because it was also... You know, my man, Dr. Robert Evans, who was the, uh, the CEO of Never So Deep Records, him and my man, DJ Bless, his son, he's the one who told me, F your rap dreams. You know what I'm what? saying? He's the one who said, yo, you're not good at rap, <laughs> but you're great at radio. Yeah. And you could be one of the greats if you focused on that. And this is Charleston, South Carolina, when I'm a part-time radio personality, yeah. and he saw that, that vision for me. So, yeah, from day one, I knew that I wanted to be in the position that I'm in now. Like, I was admiring the big boys and the sways of the world and still do mm -hmm. but i wanted to be amongst that number you know and i knew at least at some point in in life for my generation i would be considered one of those those super jocks so hopefully i've yeah. gotten to that point point. and i love that <clears throat> phrase you use divine misdirection yeah because sometimes there are these indicators in life yeah. and perhaps we filter or we try to understand what that means through what we see. Right. So growing up, did you see a lot of, did you see more rap artists? And so it's like, I know it's a mic, but then I'm thinking it's rap. Well, yeah, when you were a young black man and you know, you grow up in, 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 a, in, in the hood, the people you see that are successful when you mm -hmm. turn on your television most of the time, the people you see that are successful that are black are usually in entertainment or athletics. Right. I'm five, six. Like, I don't have a wicked jump shot. You know what I'm saying? Like, I was too bad in school to ever play sport. So just for me, I felt the way out of the hood was either through entertainment or, or, or through athletics. So that's, that's, that's why I pursued those, those, <clears throat> those that, that dream. Beautiful. How about you? Well, one of the things I, you know, I believe is 
God has a plan and we have a plan. Right? <laughs> yeah. And somewhere in life, God's plan and our plan come together. Yeah. Uh, that normally ends up with us having to give up our plan <laughs> and focus on his. Yeah. Yeah, so my whole plan for me, I knew music was going to be my life. I knew it. My mother said when I was in her womb, she would play music and I would kick. Wow. She stopped playing music, I wouldn't kick anymore. And that's how they kind of like had a conversation with me when I was in her womb. By the age of four, I was playing drums. By the age of 12, I'm playing five instruments. Wow. Without going to school. Because you, you were self-taught. Self-taught, that's right. That's amazing. Just at home watching people. And so I always knew I was going to be in music, right? Mm -hmm. And I wanted to be Usher at one point. <laughs> and so I wanted to be Michael Jackson. I wanted to be Usher. And God had other plans. <laughs> you know, and everyone, you know, everybody's like, yo, man, you should, why don't you do an album? And I remember when I was like 18 years old, you know, I'd really kind of was trying to figure out whether I was going to be a music producer because I was great at creating things from scratch. I was yeah. just good at going to the studio. I can hear it. I created it. And being on stage <laughs> with all that pressure of having to live up to just that world. And I was like, and God was like, nah, bro, it's not for you. And because he wanted me to teach artists how to survive in the game. You know yeah. what I mean? So that was my job. You know what I mean? So well, the passion I have, like my singing, everyone's like, but you sing though. I'm like, yeah, but I use it to coach people in the studio. You know what I mean? When I'm recording, whoever it is I'm recording, mm -hmm. like it just became tools that I use. You know, my, my ability to understand what an artist looks like, yeah. my ability to, that's a star, might need work. All of that became a tool because of my desire of what I thought I wanted for myself is now being used as a tool for somebody else, yeah. just like him. You right. know what I mean? He can speak very, very well. Yeah. But that comes from all the rapping lyrics that he does. Like, he's freestyling off the top of his head. Yeah. He's maneuvering in, 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 in place right there and then. But he's had all that experience being a rapper. So those experiences in our lives and our desires to want to be something, to become something else, they're all tools. Because it's almost it. as though, you know, God would use that very, like the initial thing that you thought as a vehicle to get you to the place of purpose. That's right. And so I love that you say God has a purpose and we have a purpose. And it's interesting because there's a point where they kind of meet mm -hmm. and yeah. we have to, you know, and that meeting place is like we have to recognize what we have to let go of so we can really merge with his purpose. Right. And, and, some, so, and, you know, a lot of times your good plan isn't God's plan for you. That's right. And right. it's a good plan. It's just not God's plan. But even in talking about purpose, you know, one of the things that when I think about purpose, I think about when your life creates room for others to thrive. Right. Um, what you mentioned. <laughs> I like that kind of talk right there. I like that kind of talk. So what you mentioned, you know, deals with how you are helping people. That's right. And yeah. Charlamagne, I've been following, you know, the things that you do and how there's this evolution really of how you're using your platforms to to begin to pour into people. And so right now, you know, our generation is a social media age. Everyone wants to be an influencer, but no one, not, well, not no one, but not many are looking to make impact. And so I would like to even hear from you guys, you know, what was that, what was that, what were the moments like when you started realizing like, this is really not about me? I was, I was reading uh, Dr. Wayne W. Dyer um, the power of intention mm -hmm. and um, I read where he said if you're trying to find your true purpose in life know that your true purpose in life comes through service of others that's right yeah 100% and I started to think about what genuinely makes me happy that's you know right. if I was on the basketball court I would be the person who enjoys leading the league and assists more than I lead lead the league scoring. in scoring. You know mm. what I'm saying? Like, like those phrases would always stick out to me when I would watch basketball when they talk about Magic Johnson makes people around him better. That's right. Wow. You know, mm -hmm. like you always wanted to be that person that makes people around you better, that can, you know, take that talent and help elevate the people around you to another level. And I think yeah. about when I, I grew up watching, you know, Diddy and, and, and you know, Jay-Z and these guys who ran these record labels, but they also had other stars around them you That's know right. what i mean like they That's were the like I, i've always been into the producer who could make the, the next person yeah. sound hot so so for me it was that quote from wayne w Dyer that let me know like man none of this none of this is about me mm -hmm. you know and then no no doubt i remember being selfish at one point in my life when i first started the breakfast club in 2010 i remember telling my homeboy dj frosty i said i'm gonna do something that i've never ever done before in my existence and that's focus on me 
Because mm. I said to myself, if I can get myself in the position that I feel like I need to be in, then I can really hold that door open and, and help yeah. other people get in. And, I, and I, I feel like I've done that. And that's really what I enjoy doing. I enjoy doing that more than anything. That's I like right. empowering people. I like finding that next talent, whether yeah. it's radio, whether it's that next dope comedian, just that next star in general and like yeah. helping yeah. elevate their voice. Or that person who, you know, can speak consciousness to our community, you know what I'm saying? Who can say things that can empower the black community in some way, shape, or form. Like, how do we elevate those voices? So, But I even want to, um, because even when you said, like, in that moment, you felt like you were, you know, you were being selfish. But that's the kind of selfishness that is also, in a way, selfless. I yeah. do believe there are moments where you're being selfish to be selfless. And there are moments where you're being selfish to be selfish. Absolutely, because I can't help nobody yeah. if I don't help myself. <laughs> no, but even in regards to that, I remember there was an interview that you mentioned how your first radio job, you talked about how, you know, when you got fired from that position, you said that you felt like God took that away from you because you, you misused the platform. I was using the platform. What did you yeah. mean by that? Um, this is when I was working at High 98.9 in Charleston, South Carolina. And this was just like my first taste of celebrity, mm -hmm. so to speak. And it wasn't really no real celebrity. It's just that, you know, I saw my name on a marquee. We went out to this this uh this this club called the Nightlife in Kings Creek, South Carolina. And we went out to this my name was on the marquee and it said Charlemagne the God. And I'm like, oh shoot. And then like that was my first, you know, experience with fame fame and groupie love. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, exactly. And it's just like, yo, I remember, you know, th th this, this young lady was kicking it with us and, you know, I just, we, we treated her great. It was a yeah. great time. But I just remember feeling so empty after that. I'm like, yo, it gotta be about more than this. It gotta be about more than using the power of the microphone to get that's right. Pussy for I don't like talking about pussy. Yeah. I'm talking about face. <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? So it, it you just, can make it, us a cat. Yeah. Okay. It, just, it, just, it just made it just made me it made me feel empty and like I, I was really feeling myself though. I'm talking yeah. about just in general. Yeah. Like I was. I was now that is a different kind of selfish. That's what I'm yeah, talking about. That yeah. level of selfishness where it's almost like you're manipulating the platform for Absolutely. selfish gain. Absolutely. And don't get me yeah. wrong. I was still doing things in the community and helping people, but I knew that. I just needed to be checked. Yeah. And I think we all go through that at some 100%. point yeah. in our career. So when I got that first firing, I was really mad at the program director. His name was Corey Hill. I was super mad at him. And then I had to sit back and think about it. And I was like, nah, I called that on myself. Yeah. You know, and I, I really feel like God took that away from me because I was abusing the power of the microphone. Yeah. And I've, I've never had that problem since. That's beautiful. And how many, what do you feel like was that moment that God revealed your purpose to you? I mean... The first time, you know, there's different sides to purposes, right? So I always knew that my before I left this earth, I was going to do something great. Mm -hmm. And I was 12 years old, 12, 13 years old. And I remember uh, my parents, my mother, who's a very, very, like, uh, just prays. Like, I've never seen anybody pray like my mother does. Wow. Like, she prays to the point where sometimes we're just in mid-conversation and she goes into prayer like it's become so accustomed to it <laughs> That's I, you know being nigerian and where where we and being born in london we had a lot of different uh different fights from maybe black america to have you know what i mean a lot of people look at black british people and feel like oh y'all had it different like we drank with tea with the queen it was like no nah, bro <laughs> like we had hoods and we had our own racism and our own fights and my parents mm -hmm. were immigrants they weren't even mm -hmm. supposed to be in the country so us living in the neighborhood that we did live in and then go into private Catholic school, which was fully, it was a white dominated school. There were a lot of fights that I had to have. But anyway, it, so she spent a lot of time praying to keep us covered. And this particular time she prayed and she had a dream that one of us was going to get hit by a car. Mm. It's four of us, I'm the oldest of four. And the person she saw in the dream was my little brother with Down syndrome, Emmanuel, but it wasn't him. I was like... I'm 10 years, 12 years old, like, I'm, I'm, he ain't gonna be outside, like. So anyway, I go to school, come back, 70 miles an hour, hit by a car. Crossing you the hit road. by a car? Yes, sir. Wow. Died immediately. Immediately on the spot, died. And um, I remember, I just remember getting off the school bus, crossing the road, and that's it, and then it was blank. Then I remember, I felt like, what felt like a dream to me, mm. turns out it wasn't, <laughs> but, it felt like a dream to me was me floating over whatever was taking place. Couldn't see me, but could see a crowd of people. And I heard a voice say, it's not time. It wasn't no holy voice like, it's not time. <laughs> it was literally like, 
talking to you was like, it's not time. Wow. And I woke up. And everything that's led to me getting to this point right now has just been nothing but a God-ordained movement. Yeah. Like, and what I've come to realize is I do have a gift and your gift will make way, definitely. Mm -hmm. So I had to identify what that gift was, which was music. Yeah. I mean, I could have played pro soccer and did other things, but music was my truest gift. I wake up and I think about it. I go to sleep, I think about it. Wow. Music is like, music is in my life. I can play five instruments without being taught. <laughs> it's a gift, you know yeah. what I'm saying? And then as I, as I went on, you know, our, 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 as you know, England has its own fights when it comes to our space in the music industry mm -hmm. as black people. So we had that fight and I moved to America. And in the first year I moved to America, I tried to be discovered by a bunch of people and I'm discovered by Rodney Darkchild Jenkins, right? Who I'm being told by one other individual no, we don't really think you that good. Rodney's hearing my music in another room by somebody else, and he's like, yo, whoever that kid is, find him and bring him to me. So I'm being let down in one space, but being picked up in another. Wow. For me, that's, that's God yeah. right there, you know what I mean? And my whole life, he just gives me signs. Or me sitting down watching Chris Brown on, on TV while he's performing at the BET Awards, right? And doing a Michael Jackson tribute. And at this point, no one cares for my... Chris. Chris is like, there's people who fight for him, but there was people that. who just hated his mm -hmm. guts. And I sit there and literally I turn around and I was like, man, I feel like we're going to work with him. And then that very week, I'm in a room with Chris Brown and he's like, and we're shooting a video to another song that I produced mm -hmm. that wasn't for me. And this is why I always tell people, never, never shoot down the small blessings that God gives you, right? right? No such thing as a small blessing. Yeah. Right. Because everything is, a blessing. is connected. A moment, like your mother having that dream. Yeah. And then you experiencing it. Yeah. But the intention of God was never to kill you. No. It was almost like a, a, a point that you would connect to. Uh, almost like, you know how you have these near-death experiences or these awakening experiences mm -hmm. that stay with you forever. Mm -hmm. And so no matter any room you enter, there's something in the back of your head that's making you understand that the reason I'm in this room is bigger than what's in this room. Mm -hmm. Because the experiences you're having, some other person can have that experience and their fascination or the epitome of success would be being in that room. Right. But when you have that in the back of your head, like, it's not your time. I didn't, I didn't just have you live to make music, let's say, with Chris Brown. There's mm -hmm. something that this platform holds for you. But, the, but the, not only that, it also was a reminder that I do have a time. Yeah. There's a day where this comes to an end, so you got to live full out. Do you know what yeah. I mean? Like I, I wake up every day knowing, like, it's by grace I'm here. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because that could have been it right there and then. Every time I hear a story of someone losing their life, you know, people I know, people who take their lives, like my heart breaks because it's like, damn, like I know what that feels like yeah. to be like, yo, you've got a time, and to not live the fullest okay. and to stay humble. Wait, with you know, it. something about you that I love is. I mean, even when I hear about the people you've worked with, hmm. it's, it goes beyond music. Yeah. It goes into how you pour into people and how you feed them. Right. And it's just like when I think of you, Charlemagne, it's beyond your influence and everything. You start opening these different avenues with writing, with you don't have to write for you. All this is for people. It's yeah. for someone else to pick that book up, someone else that may never pick that book up from, let's say, a pastor. But then they're like, oh, wait, I love Charlemagne the God. I'm going to read what he has to say. Mm -hmm. And so there are these, it's almost going back to the whole, the whole concept of God using that as a vehicle for you to now discover the true essence of purpose. But even in that, what, what you mentioned earlier with divine redirection or misdirection, misdirection yeah. do you feel like there are, in the evolution of purpose, that God can give you a purpose that you don't like? Oh, yes. all the time. <laughs> oh, sure. That's why, that's why I said a lot of things are just bigger than you. But I, I'm, I'm not going to sit here and say I don't like it. It's just that, like I said, sometimes your good plan is not God's plan mm -hmm. for you. So you might have your vision board laid out. You might have your long-term goals written out, your short-term goals written out. You may have things in your heart that you absolutely want to do. But when it doesn't happen, do you keep pushing or do you listen to that voice in your head that says, I don't want you to have this right now. Because a lot of times God be protecting us yeah. from, our, oh from, from ourselves. Like from, He be protecting yeah. us from things that's going to hurt us. That's right. You know, we're not supposed to be in this position yet. We're not supposed to be at that level yet. Or that's not even the avenue that you're supposed to be going down. That's what right. you want to do. Right. What, would you, what, what, would, what can you pinpoint as something in both your lives that you feel like, 
when God told you to do it or God is speaking to you about it and you recognize it. Either you're running away from it till now or you ran away from it for a long time and came to the conclusion of, right, let me just do this. Um, probably therapy for me, mm -hmm. which, which was interesting because then therapy led to me, you know, writing my, my second book. But it definitely was therapy for me because... Like, you know, things get overwhelming and, you know, I have had been flirting with the idea of therapy for so long and having conversations with different people about it. And, you know, you know, finally, I just had this revelation when I was on vacation and my wife was like, yo, just go, yeah. go sit down and, and kick it with a therapist. And that was something that felt felt so surreal because it makes you feel vulnerable in a way mm -hmm. that you didn't even know you were capable of feeling. And it makes you feel so very confused because at 40 years old, I thought I had it all figured out. Right. You know, I thought that I knew exactly who I was. I knew exactly why things happened in my life. But then you start re-examining all of these different things that happened in your life. And you like, I really don't know nothing. Yeah. You know right. what I'm saying? Like, right. like everything I thought I knew is, has been a total oh. lie. And to just, you know, be sitting in therapy and to, to just strip everything down, you know, and then you know, keeping a journal of everything that was happening to sure. me in therapy. Because that's yeah. what I was doing. I was just keeping a journal of everything that was going on and things that give me anxiety now, things that historically gave me anxiety. And then to say, you know what, this is, this is going to be a book. Because I wasn't pressed to write a second book. I just wrote a book in April of 2017. And I mean, the book company, of course, they will always take another book from mm -hmm. you. But I didn't even know this was something that I wanted to do. And then, you know, writing these pages down and then... You know, the publisher, like, you know what would be good if you went and got a doctor to, you know, like, like, like be in the book so with you. So all the puzzle pieces just start coming together yeah. one step at a time. So you realize, like, damn, this, this, this book was easier to write than the first one. You and know? what I love about what you're yeah. even mentioning, it's just how, because for someone listening, they, would be, they could think like, okay, how is it that, you know, God's purpose involves someone going to therapy? But it's all, everything connected. The yes, therapy yeah. connected to journaling, to writing the book, and now many lives are being touched by this book. That's interesting. So if you got hit by that car. Yeah. They didn't pray you, pray you out of that car. <laughs> right. You had to go to the hospital. Yeah. Like we act like God doesn't have right. people that he's putting in the place to like help, help us. In that, what in do you that think path. doctors are? What do you think therapists are? That's like, right. Come on. I mean, I love that. His healing process is what's saving people's lives. Exactly. Right now. You understand what I mean? Like, if you don't experience, then you can't tell. Other people. Absolutely. Like I could like his book, this there's things in his book that's changed a lot of our lives, including yeah. myself, where I was like, ah, I relate to that. And to be especially being a young black man where you maybe didn't have the many of elders to speak to or you know, who or they you know, they expect you to you're a man, handle that. You know what I mean? You know, after I'm thirty eight years old. And sometimes my emotions just be like, yo, I, am I supposed to feel like this? You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> and, and, you know, the one thing I know about God is he wants you to experience it all. Yeah. Um, and he wants you to live it all. You know what I mean? And that's why he doesn't mind you failing as long as you fail and come back to him. Mm -hmm. The failing part isn't the problem. It's when you run away from him. And I think even like talking about experiences, because in an experience, I always look at life that... I need to get something to give right. somebody something. Yeah. And so even if I'm experiencing something that may be traumatic to me, that's the only way I can give something back Absolutely. to someone. Right. You, you, know? you got to look at it. I, gotta, I hate to use this reference, but I, like, cause I don't eat pork. But like, think about in the slave times, how they never yeah. would discard any part of the hog. Like mm -hmm. every part of the pig could be used. That's how I feel about experiences. Whether right. you want to label them good, whether you want to label them bad, yeah. whether you want to label them ugly, they are your experiences. And yeah. I feel like God has things happen to you so he can work through you. Exactly. Mm -hmm. I mean, and, and you got to understand the, the fact that we have choice, see, God doesn't force us to do anything. Yeah. Like, He knows if we choose left, He's gonna He's gonna be there. If you choose right, He's gonna be there, and he, that's why He knows all. But we still have to make a choice. Yeah. Do you understand what I mean? And sometimes some people's and why purposes change over time is age. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yes. You're not gonna be 50 years old trying to be have a singing there's career. There's a time. Yes. <laughs> like we all, but doesn't mean there's no yeah. purpose at 50. That's right. Yeah. And so when you, you know, I have a friend who was a football player, and you know, he wasn't able to go to the finals with the team that he played because he mm -hmm. got injured. And I remember he was really frustrated for the that the year he was off. And I was like, dude, what's wrong? And he was like, man, I feel so frustrated because I was wanted to go to the finals. You know what I mean? I just feel, and I said. So let me get this straight. 
the cards are off the table that you can't go to the finals. I'm like, man, I don't play no more. I said, but you can coach the next team to mm -hmm. go to the finals, Absolutely. which means you will still accomplish the dream that you had to go to the finals. So and it could just, just evolve. It could evolve, evolve into, into something, something else. else. Right. What do you think drives your purpose? Like, what do you think is the driving force behind it? Because what I'm hearing is like there's sacrifice. There's the understanding of the essence of time. Like, mm. I'm not going to be here for that long. Like, in my life, I think of empathy. Mm. Um, I think that there are things that I have experienced and it, that is my, the drive for me is that I connect with what God revealed to me. Yeah. Because no matter the different hats I may wear, whether it's as a pastor or an author or talk show host, the very core of my purpose, I define it as to, um, to, have, to teach people about the love of God yeah. and almost to be, help people navigate what their identity in Christ. I can identify to two things. I want to ask you a question. When you say teach people the love of God, right? What does that even mean to you? To me, now there are different layers to that because even the teaching, it's almost, I would even say it's to bring people in an awareness of the love of God. Mm -hmm. And so the awareness of God's love can be layered into, first of all, understanding that he is for you. Mm -hmm. and, they, and that's why I love the word teach because when you break down the character of God, because the character of God in our generation has really been tainted. Mm -hmm. it, has, it has become a thing where even people would use the Bible and manipulate the scriptures and make it look like God is this, you know, control freak or something like that. But in the character of God, when people look at the scriptures and they realize like, wait, this happened, but it was for this. This happened, but it was for that. Like when you talk about your accident, now someone may say, oh, wow, why would that happen? Like, you know, you, you died. But that was a moment that God was giving you as, a, as something to remember. Like, you don't have that much time here. And so in the teaching element, it's for people to understand first the character of God. And when I talk about the love of God, I think that that is also layered. Um, like one of the things that, you know, just even as a pastor or even in the things that God allows me to move in, the prophetic. The prophetic to me is, an, is the essence of God's love. When people recognize that, wait, God, you see me. God, you know me. Like, God, how is that? Like, how could that person know that about me? But that is not even about the person. It's about the love of God saying, like, I know everything about you. I knew, I know what you were wearing when you woke up. That should tell you that I see you. I'm for you. And so those different layers is that, no, God loves us. Like, God loves you. And I think that one of the things we say so... Um, you know, freely is like, you know, Jesus loves me or God loves me. But if we really move in the understanding of what that means, it kills a lot of things. Like mm -hmm. it kills a lot of um, like just a, a fear because mm -hmm. you're like, wait, the creator of the universe mm -hmm. is for me. Mm -hmm. I'm good. Like I might not understand what's happening right now, but mm -hmm. I'm good. Absolutely. You know, and, and so and that's the problem with society today. Yeah. But it's been you got to understand society, society today is built up of years and years and years and years, even up to the biblical times. Like, these are stories and layers that's just been building up to the yeah. point that we're here. Because you just said something interesting. You said fear, right? Mm -hmm. Man's first sin was fear. Do you know what I mean? First what? Sin was fear. Like, the moment she ate the apple and he ate the apple and God came down and said, hey, uh, where y'all at? He was, they were like, uh, that's interesting. The fear of missing out, actually, if you think about it. Do you know what I mean? And she thought she was yeah, missing out on yeah. something. Right? But now and, you so, and that's what I feel with social media. Like, it's the fear of it's missing the fear. out. Well, that's everything we right. built, it's control on. is based on fear. Like, but you the know reason something why the government I read. wants to dominate the it's world all... right now is because they're afraid another person is going to come. Biblically, when the Israelites uh, got taken over by the Egyptians was because the fear that the Israelites were outgrowing and they were stronger. Mm -hmm. when, they, when the Africans got taken as slaves was fear because these guys are bigger than us yeah. and stronger than us. Everything... Up to this point has been built on fear, but then God says, yo, I didn't give you that spirit. At all. I gave you love, power, and if you have a sound mind, you'd understand that I didn't give it to you, and you'd be rest No, in something him. I read recently was that, that babies are born with only two fears. The fear of a loud noise hmm. and the fear of falling. Guess where I read that? My book. book. <laughs> <laughs> I read that in your book. Yeah. And what I love about that is everything else we are taught. Yeah. We learn that. It's all learned yeah. behavior. Yeah. yeah. I agree 100%. Like, I mean, I got a three month old house. I mean, I got three daughters, but my three month old, you know, it's, thank you. I mean, it's different when you got a, ten, I got a 10 year old, a three year old, and now a three month old, but it's different because like you pay attention to all of them in a different way. Yeah. The first one, you're learning how to be a parent. 
The second one, you feel like it's the sequel and you're doing it again, but then you quickly realize the second child is nothing like the first one. That's right. And then the third one, you just kind of like enjoying the moment. And that's, and, and, and that's how she is. Like, a loud noise, she'll just jump. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I don't know if that's fear or if she's startled, but she's, she senses something isn't right. Yeah. And I mean, I think all of us need to get back to just our, our childlike ways. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, just, like, that's why I like, that's why I loved going to therapy because all the learned behavior that I had over the years, I just started stripping away. And even before therapy, it was just things that didn't serve me anymore. Yeah. Right. You know what I mean? Things that got me to a certain point, but they just weren't making me feel good that's anymore. Right. And I think, that's right. you know, when you're in this business sometimes, you can become a character to yourself. You know, and I, I, I've been saying this for a while, but I actually saw Future say this this week. Future was like, I was scared to let go of the, 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 the drug raps because I didn't know how kids were going to, if yeah. they were still going to embrace yeah. me the that, same that's way. Right. That's right. Bro, that's that's part of like letting go of your good plan and embracing God's plan. That's right. You know what I'm saying? Do you feel worthy to serve in the manner that God has called you to? I didn't. <laughs> I didn't. I'm just getting there. Um, mm -hmm. Had a conversation with Bishop T.D. Jakes and he quoted Tyler Perry. And, you know, Tyler Perry has this quote. He just says, get to worthy. You know, mm -hmm. you know, just I, I didn't. I didn't feel qualified to be in the position that I was in regardless of how hard sure. I've worked you know I don't feel like I have any particular talent any particular skill set that that got me to this point I don't necessarily believe in luck I just mm -hmm. believe in you know this is what this is where God wanted me to be and that's what that's what Bishop T.D. Jakes told me he said even if you don't feel like you know yeah. you're worthy know that God feels like that's right. you're worthy to be where you are so I don't want to make a, a fool of him you know mm -hmm. it's just like if Somebody in this room refers me for a job or I refer you for a job, like you should go in there and not want to embarrass yourself, but you shouldn't want to embarrass me either because I'm the one co-signing you. That's right. Who's the biggest co-signer in the universe other than God? God. Yeah. So, so God put us here. He chose us to be in these positions for a reason, just, to, just in life, just to be born, to be a, to be a human. You could have been an ant. <laughs> Nothing to be wrong with being an ant, but I'm saying you could have been an ant. So it's just like, yo, we're human beings. So I want to realize my full potential as yeah. a human being on this planet. So yeah, up until a few months ago, I d I didn't necessarily feel feel worthy, but yeah. I definitely am. I think that's uh, an age thing worthy. too, you know. I think you need to experience life to a certain point. And then you kind of step into like I feel like just a few months ago I'm like accepting you know, my call and, and accepting what God has for yeah. me, even though sometimes it sounds crazy, you know what I mean? Or sometimes I'm like, but now I'm like, okay, you know what? I'm down with it. And not yeah. on, and whether, whether I fail in the eyes of human beings or whether I'm living to what they want me to be, I know that he finds me worthy enough. Yeah. That's what I've been... Because I think worthiness is such a big topic. In, mm -hmm. like, even when we think of millennials today and the things that sometimes God would impress on your heart, that people feel as though, am I worthy for this task? And, I, and one of the reasons I think is because when we look at our past, it's funny, the very past that gave you what you could give someone we use it to say this doesn't qualify. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Disqualifies us, yeah. Yes. And I think social media can play a big part in that too because right. no matter how much you've grown, no matter how much you've evolved, mm -hmm. they can pull That's old right. tweets from 10 years ago, <laughs> old comments That's from right. 10 years yeah. ago. And I'm like, that was that that happened, but that's not who I yeah. am today. What did you mean by this? Yeah. I don't even know no more. Like, yeah. I don't know what I meant by that, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's just like, yo, you can't keep bringing me back to a mind space that I'm not remotely in anymore. Yeah. Right. So it's just like, yeah, the, the, the get the worthy is just to like embrace where you are right. and, 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 and why you are right. and what you are. And it's okay to say, I still don't know. Yeah. I just know I'm here for a reason. Yeah. And I'm gonna keep figuring it out as I, as I go along. And I don't even know if we will ever know exactly the fullness of why, you know what I mean? Until, you know, we leave, yeah. you know what I mean? And the next person is speaking on our behalf and yes. writing, you know, about the book and using yeah. it as a dissertation or it's in, in, the, in, the, in the schools. And, you know, he, you know, words that you've spoken and why you've spoken. Now, like, you know what I, I love about it, that in the Bible, there's a man named John the Baptist. Yeah. And when he was in prison, Jesus said something about him, how he was like, you know, you know, John the Baptist is like the greatest of, 
you know, amongst like everyone here or something like that. But John the Baptist never heard what Jesus said. Hmm. Like mm. that word never got back to him. Mm. And so it's interesting how you, the impact that your life is making right. or even the things that how you could even be blindly walking in the very purpose of God and not even know. Yeah. Yeah. And while you're questioning yourself, Jesus is saying, oh, look at they're just in purpose. Like right. they're doing exactly what I've called them to do. And you could be completely oblivious, oblivious. of it. Yeah. Well, and some, uh, you're right. And I think sometimes God will, will, will talk through you to other people and he'll have other people. Yeah. He'll talk to other people to talk to you because sometimes we got to. He, not sometimes, all the time. We got to celebrate each other. Yeah. Yes, you know, when you see somebody doing something that's powerful, yes, when you sir. see somebody doing something that's benefiting other people, when you see somebody walking in their purpose, yo, big them up. Yeah. Like, let them know, like, yo, I see what you're doing because that lets them know that they're on the on the right path. I do that with everybody around. Well, that's one of the things I love about his platform is yeah. because it's not just about hip hop and what's going on in the music industry. I've seen so many, I've learned so, so many different people yeah. that I never knew who they were. And to also know that they're doing great things Absolutely. in the game, exactly. like, you know, and 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 like projecting, projecting the positive, the you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, and that's and that's what our platforms are there for. You know, I feel like a lot of people, like, there's a lot of people who don't know what I see behind closed doors yeah. when an artist is putting music out, or me having to tweak their messaging because they're going too far one yeah. way. Or, you know, suicidal comments or, you know what I mean, having to pray for them while, while making records. Mm. So you what, know what, would, I'm what would you both say are some of the most powerful, or even one of the most powerful testimonies you've received from someone just impacted by your walk in their life? I think one of the biggest ones was, like, like I said, the moment someone stops harming themselves, yeah. it's the biggest testimony I could ever That's get. That's right. And there's been too many of my songs that have come out over the last 10 years that people have been like, yo man, like just so you know, I didn't talk myself because of this song. Yeah. Or this song saved my marriage, or this song saved my life. Um, or when I'm able to bridge cultures, you know what I mean? Like being a British young producer, uh, but and having African parents and working in America and being able to give a legend like Janet Jackson a song, you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, made for now and connect the world, you know what I mean? Yeah. And knowing that I actually heard the song spiritually. I didn't hear the song, <laughs> you know what I mean? In the studio making, like I was literally praying, woke up, he gave me a melody, I ran to the studio and made the record and it's touching the world and hearing how It's impacting, culture, yeah, and culture's coming You don't get no better than that. That's the job done. That's beautiful. The money, is, the money and the fame, the cars and all that stuff. I remember one year, I, I, I remember one year, we had two number, we had two number one records we broke Ariana Grande and, and Fantasia just had number one album. And I woke hey, up let me hold something, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. You know? Order lunch let, let both of us hold something. And I remember waking up, and you know what I'm saying? My whole dream was to get to this point where mm -hmm. I was like, you know, I'm, I was watching my Rodney, I'm watching Pharrell Timberland. I'm like, I want to be like them one day. And then finally I'm here. And I woke up and he's like, congratulations, man. Two number ones. And I was so sad. Mm. Mm. I was like, because I, firstly, I was exhausted wow. from all the work I'd put in. Secondly, I was sad because it was like, is this it? I got the numbers on the board and this is it. And that's why I relate when he said, I felt empty. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I felt so sad. So when I see the testimonials of life changing that's and people good. are, you know what I mean? Like, I have songs that have never been made a dime that I've got testimonials on. Wow. See, those ones are special to me because I'm not necessarily seeing the benefits of it, but I'm seeing the benefits of it. Yeah, I'm not beautiful. physically getting, cashing in a check, but I'm physically seeing lives change. Yeah. And for me, that's what I'm here for. Sow the seed into the ground. Keep yeah. putting it in the world and let the world seed do what it's going to wake up one day and be like, whoa, I've got a forest. Right. Do you know what I'm saying? Of blessings. Not just for me, but for other people. I love that. You know what I mean? How about you, Charlamagne? Yeah, I mean, I, I don't really have one because I, I literally get those all the time. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Walking through the airport, being in a restaurant, like, like literally, I can think of, I can literally think of 15 different times that happened to me yesterday. You know, somebody wow. walking to me at the airport, like, yo, Charlamagne, I read both of your books, man. You know, I go, I go to therapy now because of you. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm in the restaurant last night, this dude walks up to me and he's like, yo, man, you know, I just love how you speak up for us and you know like I, I, I get those all the time and every single one 
mean something to me. Like yeah. I was I was having a, a meeting last night in the lobby of the hotel, and this this young woman named Maisha mm -hmm. came up to me and she was like, "Yo, my my, my friend." really wants to meet you like she literally talks about you all the time but when she when we started having a conversation she was talking to me about the growth she's seen in me she was like oh i remember you, you was this ratchet ass dude and like you still got the ratchet in you but you and play you know you, you empower people now and you know what i'm saying you, you enlighten people you've evolved and like those are the those are the best compliments to me because yeah. i'm like man yeah. thank you for just recognizing my growth and you know her recognizing my growth is helping her to grow you know so yeah. it's just like all of them mean something and thank yeah. you for willing to grow you know a lot of yeah, people, yeah. people do don't want to grow bro because yeah. no, that's the, the platform, sacrifice man. like that's the sacrifice yeah. to be like yo the focus I'm here, the time and I gotta, that's yeah. it's real because i think even when when i reflect on that i think what I mean, it's true because even from a pastoral side, there's a lot of testimony, but there was one in particular that really touched me. And there was a lady who, um, she was contemplating abortion. So she had not told her family that she was pregnant. She was really young. So when she found out that she was, because the whole scenario was very messy. The person who was a father, it was just a whole mess. So it was not just the fact of her age. It was a lot of things connected to it. And she had reached out to me after a particular message that she heard. And she says, you know, if God really sees me, I know I'm going to be all right. And she, but then you know, we spoke and everything, and she ended up keeping the baby and made me the godmother. Oh wow, awesome! <laughs> so she was sending like photos, but those are the moments that makes the sacrifice worth it. Yeah. Because the truth is, there's a lot of sacrifice. Like mm -hmm. there's a lot, like even like you being here right now. Right after this, you have something else you got to go to, mm -hmm. and all of that, that focus, that drive, and when you're doing it with the heart posture of serving people, right. it's it's a That's whole thing. It. Because if it's about money. The moment mm -hmm. you hit your amount, you're it's, done. You're like done. you like top out. The money doesn't change. Yeah. It. yeah. I mean, you know, well, it does change things, but it doesn't. You're not supposed to look in, but like I'm chilling. Yeah. Like it's it, it actually more money, more problems. Like for, <laughs> real, for real, like it's not a joke. Like people don't even get that part of the game. Listen, and I know it sounds cliche to say, nah, bro. But, bro, yeah, <laughs> money brings on a whole different level of anxiety. Yeah. yeah. And you know, for me, I'm constantly thinking about when am I going to lose it. Yeah. You know, and I, I don't I don't want to have that negative mindset, yeah. but I, I was having a conversation with my man Jason last night. He suffers from anxiety like I do, and it was, I, it was good to hear him say the same thing. Like, yeah. you know how he's always constantly feeling like this is going to be taken from him, that's going to be taken yeah. from us. But yeah. it keeps you on point in a way, too, because yeah. it helps you to establish things that get you, you know you can control, yes, sir. right? Because yes, I've gotten to the point in my life where I can willingly accept the things that I cannot control. Like, it's just certain things that are out of your control. But it's certain yeah. things that are in your control. That's right. So, you know, instead of taking that $50,000, $100,000 and going to buy a new chain or uh, a car, go buy some property. Right? Yeah. You know what I mean? Go buy something that's going to appreciate with value, something mm -hmm. that's going to make you more money in a couple of yeah. years. Like, you can be intentional with, with, with where you choose to put your, your attention when it comes to your money. Just I so, like just and also because I think that's important what he said not to bash social media. Social media has brought a lot of things to the forefront, too. Yeah, I feel like black culture, especially, is getting more into the investment world and understanding, like, yo, man, like when you're hearing all the rappers talk about investing, like, social media is helping us get that message. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I'm talking to like 20 year olds, and they weren't talking like, to, like when I was 20. We were just trying to be in the game. Yeah, yeah. We were yeah, trying to yeah, get yeah. in the car. But like, we would you know be more responsible now. You know, you're hearing them talk a little bit more responsible. Yeah. That's because the information is getting to them quicker, and 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 people are having multiple conversations about it. Yeah. And even tying just you know tying back into purpose. Um, one of the things, this very book, I think, is a physical evidence of mm -hmm. what we're discussing today. Mm -hmm. um, reading this book, I think, I know, not even think, I believe that it, the wealth of wisdom in it speaks to people that may not even be struggling with anxiety. But something that really captured me, I mean, you ha I have all kinds of notes in this book, but opening the page, the very first page, the dedication, <laughs> and you wrote that this book is dedicated to those who live by faith and not by fear. Jesus. And as we have been talking, one of the, the threads in this conversation is fear, mm -hmm. that that fear of when even when it comes to disconnecting to really hear from God and mm -hmm. hear, OK, God, what is it that you're telling me about my life? But there's the fear of like, you know, what if I miss something? What if mm -hmm. someone writes me? What if my boo DMs me? I don't know. But, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, there's this fear that we're connected to. I mean, that we it's almost like we allow to drive our lives. Mm -hmm. But I want to hear from you both the power of faith in pursuing who God has called you to be? 
I mean, faith for me is just, you know, knowing everything is going to be all right. You mm -hmm. know, um, knowing that I'm going to be in the right place at the right time with the right people. Like, yeah. like even when you talk about being afraid to miss a phone call or, you know, whatever, like, I don't mind that because yeah. whatever is for me is going to be for me. That's right. faith. Like there's Amen. nothing Amen. that can stop what's mine from getting to me except for me. Yeah. Right. You know, and I, I remember Martin Luther King Jr. said, you know, faith is when you take that first step, even when you, you know, don't see the rest of the staircase. We do that every day. Yeah. About to say whether, you, whether you know it or not, when, not. You, when you wake up in the Jesus morning and you get man. up out that bed, you're taking that, that first step. So, you know, the faith not to just stay in the bed all day and hide from the world just to face the faith to get up and face it is 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 exactly what you need in yeah. order to just just succeed on this planet and i and I, I think also too when we talk about success you know when it comes to faith like success isn't necessarily celebrity that's right that's i think right. america makes us feel like you yeah. know celebrity is what we created that culture yeah, yeah. i don't like that's not success success is whatever it is that makes you happy. Yeah. And you know what I'm saying? And I think that you have to you have to have the faith to do what makes you happy and you have to have the faith to know what it is that makes you happy. Like whatever I'm supposed to have, like everything I got right now, mm -hmm. I have the ultimate faith that this is what God wants for me in this moment. Yeah. And I'm 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 happy with that. That's that's faith to me. You know I what supports that. faith? Gratitude. Yes. That's right. Like faith actually works hand in hand with gratitude. Because when you're grateful, it gives you the the, 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 the belief to continue to move yeah. forward. Because you and it know makes that. you remember. It makes you remember, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Because, you know, we could complain even when we're in the good space. Like, mm -hmm. well, how come da 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 da? J. Cole said it, like you're always, someone's always gonna drive a better car than you. Someone's always gonna have a better chick than you. Someone's always gonna have a bigger house than you. And if you keep chasing what somebody has over you, then you're never gonna be Satisfied, yeah. but when you're grateful, you know that whatever's next for you is going to be for you. Faith that that it balances it out, and without the gratefulness, if you can't be grateful to God that you took a step, as you say, we get on planes every day, every day, and we don't even think blink an eyelid. It could be over right there. You have no control when you're yeah. on a plane. We're on a seat in the sky. <laughs> in the sky, <laughs> it's done, finished. That's crazy. You know what I mean? And, then, and there's just man. faith. That's just faith. You're and, not and, thinking and, about it. And never see the pilot. Ever. Rarely. <laughs> and I, and I, like, I try to go out of my way when the flight is over just to peek in and say, yo. Thanks, man. Thank you. <laughs> That's gratitude for real. Like, thank you, Mr. Pilot, who so, God uh, said, go get your aviator <laughs> license some years ago. And could, I'm going to just go by faith. And, and, and stay sober on the flight. Yeah, and man, do no yes, crazy, yes. You know I, mean? I mean, we live by faith. Yeah. We are created with it. Like we are because to a certain degree, even fear is just faith in the wrong direction. Yeah. Because you are putting belief in right. something that you have no and guarantee if it's going to happen. You know, in, in the in the book, I have an acronym that I use that my homegirl Kay Fox gave me, and it's fear. And it's you know face everything and rise, or fear everything and run. Wow. So you know I'm that's, I, good. that's what I do. I like to use my anxiety and my my fears as fuel. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like you, 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 like I said, no experience is wasted. There's, there's nothing you go through that's wasted. You know, this, this is so powerful that I don't think, I just want us to close this in prayer. Like this. Let's do it. But I actually want you to pray, Charlotte, man. You the want bishop me to pray? Right <laughs> Go ahead, Bishop. All right, let me take a deep breath and uh, let God work through me. Um, God, thank you for this moment. Thank you for this conversation. Thank you for allowing me to be in this space right now with these two powerful individuals. Thank you for the, the conversation that we had because it is a conversation that I know we all will walk away from feeling a little bit more evolved, a little bit more grown. I know people watching this will quite possibly feel the same way. God, I just want to say thank you. You know, thank you. Those are the two most powerful words that I can always constantly tell you. Amen. Gratitude is always my attitude. I'm only here because you allow me to be here. And I pray that you just continue to give us all the strength, continue to empower us all, continue to keep divine protection around all of us, keep Amen. guardian angels around all of us so we can always constantly walk the way that you want us to walk. We'll constantly walk the way you want us to walk Amen. and constantly talk the way that you want us to talk. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Next on the same room. Religion is 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 a massive interference 
with not only God relating to people, but people relating to him. You know, we are, the last couple of generations that we're dealing with on the earth are born, were born into excruciating pain. Mm. And so they almost want relationship with God to be complex yeah. because it makes them feel like if I can prove myself to the Lord to be worth it, to be valuable, then he'll want me, he'll use me. So when you introduce a simple gospel that's full of grace and full of mercy yeah. and full of truth, they go into this is too good to be true, but that's the whole essence of the gospel. Yeah.